vitamin E acetate, an additive sometimes used in THC and other vaping products, may be the culprit in vaping-related lung diseases, at least according to the CDC. These lung injuries have been so severe that it's actually caused a few dozen people to die. As of the other day, the CDC said it's aware of 2,051 cases of lung injury linked to vaping in 49 states, all states except for Alaska. Well, I can tell you that the number is now at least 2,053 because we just reported two new cases to the CDC. When we say acute lung injury, that's a very broad medical diagnosis. It involves nasty inflammation within the lungs and can often lead to lung scarring. It's caused by lots of different things, for example, transfusion of blood products, especially transfusion of fresh frozen plasma, or FFP for short. So when someone gets acute lung injury from transfusion of FFP, we call that TRALI, or T-R-A-L-I, transfusion-related acute lung injury. Acute lung injury has a spectrum of severity, and if it's severe enough, it's called ARDS, meaning acute respiratory distress syndrome, which I actually did a video on as well. Well, when the acute lung injury is caused by e-cigarettes or vaping, it's called e-valley or e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury for short. So a recent patient of mine who is an 18 year old male came to the hospital after experiencing shortness of breath, chest pain, low grade fever, nausea, vomiting, a little bit of abdominal cramping and some diarrhea. As it turns out, he was vaping THC. He told me that he vaped Juul, although I did not ask what the specific flavor was. When he arrived to the hospital, his oxygen levels were okay, but not great. Let's put it this way, they were bad enough to require an oxygen face mask. So let's take a look at his chest X-ray. But first, let's see what a normal chest X-ray looks like. Okay, so we are looking at an X-ray of a young male patient, probably late teens, early 20s, maybe 30s. Uh, so this is a normal chest X-ray. Uh, what we're looking at here is the heart, and then here would be the aorta. This is the patient's right side, this is the patient's left side. So this would be the right lung, this would be his left lung. This is the trachea here, which splits at the carina into the right main stem bronchus and left main stem bronchus. These are the ribs coming out here. You see where there, wherever there's air, that's gonna be the lung parenchyma. So that's the lung tissue that's there. And normally that's gonna be black in appearance, which represents air. So this is a normal chest X-ray, lungs look normal. There's no fluid within the lungs and there's no fluid outside of the lungs in the pleural space. There's no pleural, pleural effusion here. There's no pleural effusion here. So this is a normal looking chest X-ray. And this is what his chest x-ray looked like when he first came to the hospital. And this is when he was getting worse. Okay, so this is the chest x-ray of my patient. He actually had two chest x-rays. Uh, one was on day one, the second one was on day three. Also on day one, he had a CAT scan, which we'll get to in a little bit. So this is his heart right here. Um, right here, you see all this kind of fluffiness, this fluffy white stuff here. Okay, that represents edema uh, that could be cardiogenic edema or non-cardiogenic edema but this is pulmonary edema meaning there's fluids and or inflammation building up within the lungs and it starts accumulating in the interstitial spaces meaning in between the alveoli but also at least partially filling the alveoli themselves looks like you have a little bit on this side but it's definitely more prominent on the left side here so what's going on in the lungs here so because he was also having abdominal symptoms, not only did he have the low grade fevers with the cough and shortness of breath and chest pain, but he also had some ab abdominal pain along with nausea, vomiting and some diarrhea. So that's why when he came into the ER, they ordered a CAT scan. And this is normal lung parenchyma. And here, this white stuff here is definitely uh, alveolar filling, at least partial filling, if not complete filling of the alveoli that are within this space. Whatever the cause is, it induces this crazy, chaotic, inflammatory response within the lungs. In this chaos, there's damage to the alveoli and the surrounding capillaries, which leads to excess protein and fluid accumulation in the interstitial and alveolar spaces. 
That means there's decreased lung compliance, increased VQ mismatch, and increases in shunt and dead space ventilation. Ultimately, this impairs the lung's ability to get oxygen into the blood. And not that you would biopsy someone with ARDS, but if you did, the histology would show diffuse alveolar damage. Okay, so back to my patient. By day two and day three post-vaping, he continued to have worsening oxygen levels in the hospital. And this was despite him getting IV solumedrol to suppress the inflammation. And he was visibly working harder and harder to move air in and out of his lungs. So this is the third day of his symptoms, the third day of him being in the hospital. You can see that there's way more whiteness in this lung compared to this lung. All this black is the air and all this white, it represents fluid and or inflammation. So this is pulmonary edema. And because we're saying that this is from vaping, that's gonna be considered a non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Definitely a little bit some here, but not as, definitely not as much as uh, this left lung here. And his worsening oxygen levels correlated with his worsening chest x-ray. Thankfully, he didn't have a pneumothorax, which sometimes these patients get. Regardless, we brought him to the ICU and put a BiPAP mask on him, which is essentially a last ditch effort to help with the breathing. I told him that if his breathing doesn't improve with the BiPAP mask, he would require a breathing tube and be on a ventilator. This is what a lot of other young people who vaped also required. Fortunately, he started to slowly improve and didn't require the breathing tube. This is not his x-ray, but sometimes the lung injury from vaping can progress to ARDS. And this is a example of ARDS here. So you could see that there's white, uh, fluffy infiltrates on both sides of the lungs, pretty extensive. Only a little bit of air that you can see in these lungs. So this is pretty much fluid filled, inflammatory filled lungs that you're seeing. What's interesting and very scary is that we still don't know for sure what the cause is. Vitamin E along with vitamin A, D and K are fat soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins are able to easily pass through the cell membranes of the body, unlike non-fat soluble vitamins, for example, vitamin B. Vitamin E acetate is used in nutritional supplements and skin creams and are not safe to inhale. But this fat soluble vitamin is added to some THC vaping liquids to help with THC absorption in the alveoli, at least in theory. Although there could be other chemicals causing the lung damage, the only culprit right now is the vitamin E acetate, but it's still an ongoing investigation. And because all this is so new, we don't know the underlying pathophysiology of this disease, which also means we don't have any studies on treatment options. We typically give corticosteroids, such as solumedrol in this case, to patients who have severe inflammation. And based on the vaping cases that are out there, it seems to be effective. But steroids have a ton of potential side effects, so that is why we only use them if we really have to. Of course, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So the best solution is not vaping in the first place, especially vaping THC, and especially if you're a teenager or a young adult. Just the other day, Juul said it stopped online sales of mint Juul pods. The company said it will only sell Virginia tobacco, classic tobacco, and menthol flavors in the US. And get this, investigations have also found many of the THC products people reported using were THC cartridges, which were bought through black market sources, but it might be from some legitimate sources too. As more states and federal government consider banning flavored nicotine, thousands of vapors are figuring out online how to make e-liquids at home. And this just came out today. Now, this was just in the news today, the first double lung transplant due to vaping. This was done at a hospital in Michigan, I believe in Detroit. So what we're looking at here, so this is a CAT scan and this is a chest x-ray. So again, not exactly comparing apples to apples because a CAT scan is a higher resolution picture of a chest x-ray. But what you're looking at here is before the lung transplant. So this patient's original lungs, there's hardly any air in his lungs. This is his trachea, which divides into his right main stem and his left main stem here. And there's uh, his bronchial tree. You can see there's little bits of air in his bronchial tree, but essentially no air within his lungs themselves. Maybe a little bit here, but that's about it. So this is after the lung transplant. You can see he has chest tubes. That's because whenever they do the surgery, um, the lungs collapse, so they collapse. So they have to put in the chest tubes so that they stay inflated. And this is only a temporary measure. 
but you can see there's way more black, meaning there's way more air in these lungs here. There's two new studies that are showing that vaping is just as harmful, if not more harmful, for the heart than smoking is. One study showed that vapors had higher levels of LDL cholesterol compared with smokers. The other study showed that the heart's ability to pump blood was diminished compared to smokers. This was diminished not only at rest, but also during exercise. But all I can tell you for sure is that putting a bunch of foreign chemicals in your lungs is not a good idea. And I don't think you need a lung doctor to tell you that.